somebody in the name. Sorry, I'm listening to, to the music while I was waiting for you, and I was getting some picture work together. So I'm just kind of going along with the beat. Okay. I got nothing to say. I'm a My bad. I was really getting into that. I said, do I have to turn you down? No. Oh, yeah. Let me do that one other page real quick. You all set? I'm all good. Thank what you. it do, family? Welcome, welcome back to a uh, pirate talk with me, your host, your friend, your pirate captain, Monkey D. Kev, and then we got our co-host here, the one and only pirate hunter. HV Nimbus, also known as Pirate Hunter Brandon, who came from <laughs> Shimasuki Village, because we're about to get to his backstory in this episode. Oh my gosh. Alright, B, you ready? Yep, yep. Oh, let me do one more thing. Alright, so episode opens up with uh Zoro so remember how last episode and the last it ended with uh Captain Kuro of the Black Cat Pirates let me pull him up oh I could just do Kuro I don't know if I spelled his name right I did yay K-U-R-O, but no. So we ended off with Captain Curl taking over the mansion. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. Because it's kind of yelly in my ear. Is, is it quiet on y'all end? Oops. Yeah, let me do that. Oh, it's kind of loud on your side. Here we go. Alright, so yeah, it opens up with... Uh, so the last episode ended with Coral taking over Kyra's mansion. Locking them in, and we see that they throw Zoro and Mary into the well. So that's where the next episode opens up with Cora, with uh, Mary and Zoro in the well. They Zoro wakes up, but you know, again, one of the biggest changes that compared to the anime and the manga, the live action did, is that they killed off Mary. So mm -hmm. they shouldn't have killed off Mary. Exactly, and it's like I was rewatching the episode, and I really started agreeing with you, B, when you said that uh, at least they they should leave bought back the uh, like they should at least kept the Usa pirates in there, mm -hmm. because now that Mary's dead, who's who's Kyra going to be with now? Yes, pretty much. So yeah, I agree with you on that, and so then the episode cuts over. To, I ain't gonna lie, because we haven't really talked about this part yet. But you ever notice each episode, it kind of shows off like the One Piece logo, but in like each character's style. So, but I really like Zoro's style. It's I always it, it, it seems so samurai mixed with pirates. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, that's that's kind of cool. And then uh, now we go over to. Usopp meeting with 
Kobe and her Meppo because actually, isn't that no? That's what the episode actually ended off yesterday. Well, last episode ended completely right. off with was with Usopp and Kobe with her Meppo, and he's like. Yo, there's pirates in the village. They're taking over my best friend's house. They're trying to kill us. Can you help us? And uh, they they started to question. Well, Hamepo started questioning, like, yo, then who's this pirate's name? And he said, oh, it's Captain Koro. And Hamepo still being kind of like the, the little punk he is. He's like, nah, Captain Koro was killed by my daddy numbers of years ago. Who's my daddy, the great wolf, the great marine, my daddy, is the best who killed Captain Koro. So, do you, B, do you agree with, with how they still kind of holding on to Helmeppo's character? Because doesn't he kind of like disregard his dad after his dad gets kicked out the marines? Yeah, when his dad gets arrested or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um... Helmepo is supposed to be like, all right, I'm going to arrest, I'm going to go after my father and I'm going to arrest him myself. I'm going to become the best Marine and I'm going to be better than my own father. That was his thing. And I was like, okay, cool. But in here, they, didn't he already, didn't his father already get arrested? By yeah. Clark? Yeah. Okay. It was like, what, episode yeah. two or three? I think okay, it was so two. He, yeah. I don't understand why he's assuming that his father was it still there's still this great man that took out a a big a big name pirate like he still he literally is looking like with that picture right there he's literally looking at Usopp and saying you're lying exactly I mean Usopp is a pathological liar but still <laughs> yeah still like why are you so sure that your dad actually killed this pirate if nothing else he probably just scared him into hiding which obviously that's probably what actually happened. Yeah. But we don't know, and it was a little weird. And I was like, okay, they shouldn't like why is he still got this I'm still trying to impress daddy type vibe to it. Mm-hmm. So who else? Uh and then so they uh what was it? Hamepo pretty much like kinda yells at Kobe here. And says, like, well, we're supposed to be technically looking for Straw Hat. And then that's when Usopp kind of interrupts him and says, oh, Luffy, that's my other other best friend. And I was like, ha, that's, he's still lying, but also kind of telling the truth because Usopp and Luffy are besties. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's how, and then, uh, so that's when they finally decided, okay, maybe we should go with him. And I like to think that maybe Kobe... Let me see if I can get a good picture of Kobe here. Hold up. Hold up, 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 hold up. I'm, I, 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 perfect, perfect, perfect. That's exactly the one. I'm mad I sound like a Din Din Wishy. Uh-huh. So, hold up, hold up, hold up. I want a Din Din Wishy of myself. If I could find one in, like, a place that you can make your own, I would actually make my own. <laughs> so, in this shot here, that's where, uh... Kobe kind of like, okay, we got to go with him. And later on in the scene, we see that Kobe is kind of going after Luffy in a way. But at the same time, do you think he also believed in Usopp and thinking Koro was there? Like, um, just to kind of with like confirm everything? I think he just wanted to make sure because he doesn't, he doesn't know anything about Usopp yet. He doesn't know that he's like a liar or he tends to lie. Mm -hmm. So he's probably like, should I believe Helmepo or should I believe this random person? Even though he just did tell him that Luffy is there. So, mm -hmm. so if Luffy's there, don't you think another pirate might be there? And if he said if Luffy's in trouble, like the pirates are in trouble, don't you think that means there's another pirate that's fighting them? Mm -hmm. So that's just my logic. I think. Kobe probably did believe him. It was just more or less to make sure. It was more or less just to make sure that one to go get Luffy, mm -hmm. two, just to make sure that there were no other pirates. True. That's why I like to think too, because the way how the scene ended when they got Luffy was like, uh, 
let me see if I can bring up that scene here because that's actually like very no no let me let me wait on that one there because I'm going ahead of myself which I've been noticing I've been doing a lot more lately so then we finally uh cut over to Luffy all passed out from eating the soup and Nami's also in the kitchen when she's hiding so do you see we see her kind of running in the kitchen to find like, like Luffy in them and she of course you know she finds them but then she also see here's a uh, Koro and his crew about to walk into the uh, into the kitchen, and so she hides under a cabinet. But then we later, like this camera, kind of pans over to Luffy here, just kind of passed out right here on the table. Here, let me get that. Here we go. I'm also screenshotting as well, like going along with this as well. So. So Luffy's passed out on the table, and uh, we see Sham and Bucci and Captain Kuro here. But if you also notice in the scene that the soup that uh, Bucci was making for uh, Kyra, no, is her name Kyra? Dang, I'm mad I forgot her name that quickly. <laughs> wow, that's stupid of me. I just want to check to make sure. Kaya, Kaya, I said Kyra this whole time. Kaya, 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 Kaya. Okay. Kaya. Dang, I feel so dumb. So, uh, yeah, no, so they've been feeding Kaya poison. That's why she's been so sick when we first get introduced to her. And it's because of, like, they've been giving her poison. So you can see in the can here, well, not the can, the pot, it's like blue stuff around it. That's just to know that, you know, that, hey, this is poisonous. It's just as far as us audience. And Luffy ate all of it. And uh, they're about to like, hey, yo, maybe he, I think he's dead from eating all that poison. Plot twist, Luffy's not dead. He's the main character. And if you guys don't know how he can eat all that poison and be all right, because he honestly, he didn't, the poison didn't hurt him. He just more so passed out from all the eating. And that's it. And uh, if you guys don't know, Luffy has a very high tolerance to poison for some odd reason. Be the dead. They never explain why. He's just... Oh, yeah. He just got high tolerance well, to poison. There was one... Someone... I heard a theory that there was one explanation that since he's made of rubber and, you know, the whole uh, second gear thing, mm -hmm. they're saying he's burning through like... Like, he has a high metabolism, so that's why the poison can't affect him. Mm -hmm. as, as Like, it affects everyone else. Like, he burns it through his body really quickly. But yeah. then I was like, what about before second year? Exactly. So I like to think that it's just because uh since he was pretty much raised by uh like bandits, garps, and in the woods, it's like he's just naturally just like has a high resistance. Cause that can tend to happen. You know what? Didn't he like munch on some poisonous mushrooms when he was a kid? I think he did. I think he did. So he just been eating poison pretty much throughout his life. Yeah, so he just exactly. So it was like he just kind of built up naturally that tolerance. That makes a lot of sense. Pretty it's like much. if you uh, like if uh, I don't want to kind of throw this part out here, but like if you just drink a lot of alcohol, it just might take you a little bit longer to get drunk compared to the person who doesn't drink a lot of alcohol. So it's like that. Well, who doesn't? Yeah. And a person who drinks a lot of alcohol probably has a higher tolerance than a person who doesn't drink a lot of alcohol. There we go. All right. So, of course, you know, uh, they hear a knock at the door. And then that's where we see Goldie and a crew. I'm going to get this scene here because it was a nice scene of all of them just standing by the door. Here we go. Got it. Bam. Bam. So there was a scene. So they're all at the door. You can see Goaty, also known as Kobe, Helmeppo, Usopp, Random Marine Pirate, um, Random Marine uh, number 374, and number 375. <laughs> and then we got Captain Coral over here opening up the door. And this is when they're like trying to confirm. And I'm pretty sure this is like 
Kobe's just trying to confirm that okay is uh is Luffy here and then is this really a pirate here? But I was gonna say at first, like, how does Kobe and how Meppo not know that well it's particularly how Meppo. But it's like how did they not know who Coral's face if they're Marines? They, yeah, I think the only way they're identifying him like is from the weapons he used and maybe certain like out like a certain outfit he probably had on. True. Other than that, but I still though, like tell. you're not gonna try and identify somebody just from like, hey, I recognize this person because he has that exact weapon. Like a criminal is not gonna just keep walking around with it constantly, right? No, but his weapon was unique. That's true. Well, he was the only one in this universe to have a Freddy Krueger hands. That's true. Is he a swordsman? No. You want to know something? I don't think so. I think they're supposed to be claws. But they got... Do they look like swords? They're swords, but I don't think they're... I don't think he's like a real swordsman. I think it's just like convenient for him, you know? Like he just does special attacks with them they should have just made him a swordsman that would have been cool if that's the case then you know that's uh the equivalent to zoro or um what's his name hey hey don't be coming after kobe like that kobe's the goat what steve in the chat here said fuck kobe and i'm like nah kobe the goat Don't be coming at the Kobe like that. Especially, you got, it's because you got to know what happens in a manga. That's why. You got to know what happens in a manga. Nah, I don't. Young Kobe, don't like him. Old Kobe, or wait a minute, older Kobe, like him. I'll be honest. If you can tell me, like, if you would say you can only choose between live action Kobe and young Kobe, I would personally go with live action Kobe. I'll go with live action too. Yeah, because he's actually like. He seems pretty chill, and I'm curious to see how he's going to be, especially when they uh meet up again. Like because they Kobe, like Kobe sees, yeah, uh, Water Seven. So like they like they meet Kobe and Luffy meet again before the time skip. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how they're going to pull this one off because that's when he's really starting. Well, they can still keep this type of Kobe, but after a live action, I'm pretty sure Kobe has to start getting like Jack or something. Yeah, he has to work out. I don't know. See, he has to be intimidating. A little bit intimidating. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. I started after I finished watching the live action. Oh, okay. So you started watching the, the so you started watching the anime now? So you started watching anime, then I, I get it. I get it. Because live uh, action Kobe's dope. He's cool. I like live action Kobe. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, they walk up to Kaya's house. Uh, again, I, particularly, I held Meppo here because his wanted poster, well, no, his wanted poster does have his claws in it, doesn't it? Koro. Yeah, but it's only like his top half, I think. Oh, actually, go right there in that middle one. Here we go. The okay. Action. He he still looks the same. Yeah. So that it, and even in, and this is how he looked in the anime with the manga. So I was like, bro, he looks smack that on. So how do you guys like? Uh, yo, that that that's him right there. <laughs> I told you it has to be the weapons and just the coat. That's it. Ah. Uh... He's still wearing it like a suit type thing. Still though, like, so like, let's just say, uh, uh, we get a good picture of like a bank robber just walking around. Like, we they they get a full on like face and everything, and like the type of clothes he's wearing. If he like randomly walking through the streets and I recognize his face, even though he's wearing different clothes, I'm like, that's that bank robber there. Let me call the police. <laughs> like. The clothes in this, that's just. Uh, I would say I would give Kobe the pass 
But Helmeppo, no, because if he's like all up on daddy like that, pause. <laughs> Major pause. Uh, yeah, but he's all up on his father like that, saying like my father's the one who killed Captain Coral. Like Helmeppo, she'd be like, yo, that 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 is Helm right there. He is alive. But anyway, yeah, let's let's continue. Though. So. Yeah, they they open up the door and then uh, they ask like, "Hey, it's it's Straw Hat Luffy here." But I think I also kind of want to throw this in here because I just kind of thought of it. Well, maybe Kobe is just trying to get more information to make sure this is Coral here. Maybe I don't know if Kobe was being that smart though. True. But yeah, it's a. Uh... So, yeah, they ask for Luffy, and then it's like, oh, here's Luffy, and they kind of just toss him to him. And yeah. uh, Usopp gets a little upset because he's, like, he's literally crushing the Marines now, like, hey, yo, that's that's him. Like, he's, like, literally, actually, Usopp is, you ever hear the theory that Usopp is the reason why everybody calls him weak is because he's the most human in the crew? Is he? Hold on, let me think. It's like everybody else is considered superhuman in a way, except for like Usopp and Nami. I mean, okay, so Nami is obviously not regular human. Robin's a regular human, even though she has devil fruits. If you just like, there are multiple times where Robin could have been really effective, and they literally just knocked her out real quick. You know. That's true. But we're not going to count the devil fruits too, because that's still a power in a way. Okay. But it's like they're like barely have any hockey or no hockey at all. Well, uh, if that's the case, the most human would be Nami. Exactly. But I'm just saying, like, because there's a theory saying that Usopp is like the most human in the crew, so that's why he's like so weak. Oh. Uh, and then it's yeah. like. I'm starting to agree with that, whereas it's like even Usopp was yelling at the Marines, just like, yo, that's him right there. How do you guys not recognize him? <laughs> exactly. And that's how like, that's, Usopp was like, literally, he's like being the, he, like, he's the average person. Because I'm pretty sure we all sat there just like, y'all really don't know that's him. Like, my man pulled a whole Scooby-Doo, whereas like the monster's chasing Scooby and Shaggy and they stop and throw in a disguise. And the monster just like runs past him, comes back, just like. Hmm. Okay, that's not there. Let me continue. <laughs> I don't know. They just really like that's a whole that's a whole cartoon moment for me. It really is. Like you really just like all right. This is not the man you're looking for, but this is the man you're looking for right here. I have him. So here. That's just so weird to me. That Usopp, I think Usopp is one of the people, one of the characters in the um, One Piece universe to like make everything more realistic or like mm. speak out on how everything should be more realistic. Like, are you serious? Like, how do you not see this? But I don't mm. know. That's just my thought on Usopp himself. Speaking of which, Usopp is actually my favorite character in this whole, in the live action though. <laughs> you know, Usopp in the live action is mm -hmm. pretty much any regular black person. Honestly. <laughs> like, and especially when he's like telling his lies, like you could tell he's just doing it to impress people. Exactly. That's literally how black people just talk big. I love it. Alright, so uh I really wanted to get this shot here where it says, uh, when Usopp tells Kobe Luffy is a pirate shore, but not like Coral, where that always, that always kind of hammer in like the whole premise of One Piece, like one of the premises of One Piece, where it's like, well, particularly how Us like not Usopp, Luffy in live action kind of states it, where it's like, he's, yes, he's a pirate, but he's not like other pirates. He's just like, he believes that being a pirate is that you have the most freedom. And so that's yeah. why he's, uh, and he's that's like, pirate. yeah, he's the good pirate where he just prefers to be free. Where unlike Coral here, who's like a pirate and is like, just get like, was it 
take over villages, run the villages over, like how Buggy did it. Right. How Kai, like, basically, like, trying to, like, rob people, get their, their treasure, is, is the best way to put it. Pillage. Rob. Pillage. There we go. Thank you. So then that's when uh, they ask for Luffy, you know, just because, like, oh, they confirmed that Luffy's here, but Kobe goes on and tells Usopp, just like, but you don't have any proof that that's Coral there, which I'm still like, bro, he looks just like him, but whatever. <laughs> so then now we start to get the Zero flashback here, and the, we see two kids just uh, dueling. In the schoolyard. Well, not in the schoolyard, but kind of like in the, uh, in, in a dojo. Yep, in a dojo. There you go. Thank you, B. So, like, they're dueling in the dojo. And I like the fact that they got the kids had masks on because you want to think, oh, of course, clearly, because they gave us a shot of Zoro first before going into the flashback, you're thinking, oh, this is, like, the kid that's winning is Zoro. But we continue on with the duel. And, uh,. Let me see if I can get a good shot of what's their sensei's name? Shimasuki Ko- Kozaboro, is it? No, Kozaboro's is pops. So let me get this one right here. Here we go. Kozaboro. What? No, what's his name? Damn it. I know Shimizuki. Let's see. Zoro. <laughs> Is Shimi... Because Zoro's from Shimizuki Village. And then... uh, Kawina. No. Hold up. Hold up. I'm getting his name now. I feel so stupid. I'm sorry. I just saw something that just made me laugh. What was it? It was uh, <laughs> it was a whole wee thing. Oh, where? Yeah, there was someone showing off their blunt, and uh, if you saw it, it looked terrible. And someone said, "Uh, blunt looked like I am group." <laughs> that John, <laughs> it looked dry. That bet it looked terrible. It was the worst roll thing I ever saw. Like it was tearing through the papers, like the wrap. I was like, "Oh no!" Here we go. That's why I laughed. But okay. So I got it. I got it up now. I see. So we got a. His name is Kozaboro. So I was right. Uh, so we see uh, Zoro's master Kozaboro, and then we see uh, Zoro training. With the mask on, with another student, and then, but we eventually find out. So they're dueling, 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 and one of the kids, they, one of the kids, lose, and they fall, and they lost, and then they start taking a mask off, and then plot twist, it turns out here that the kid who lost is Zoro himself, as a kid. So this takes place like what six, seven years ago? No, wait. No, it can't be. Is it that right? It had, I thought it was. Yeah, seven, seven years ago. Shimizuki oh, wow. Village, seven, seven years ago. I thought it was um eight or nine. Eh, close okay. enough. Who's counting, right? It's important for the timeline. You sure about that? You sure about that? I mean, that's how people age, so... <laughs> you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure about that. You sure about that? Bro. I'm trying to get a picture of this. So, yeah, no, I don't have to get a picture of that. So, yeah, Zoro loses. And uh it turns out that the person he loses to is not only... Hold up. I'm trying to get a better picture of this one here the one and only uh what's her name Kawina D. Stairs 
And uh, turns out, so this girl here is named Kawina. Yeah, she's a uh, flashback Zero's one of like Lady Zero's childhood friend. And we're going to explain everything as the episode continues because we kind of get their full story. But he loses to this girl named Kawina Kozaboro. Which, be in my defense here, I feel like she had a slight upper edge. And the reason why is because she's the daughter of Zoro's sensei, Kozaboro. So do you think that's kind of cheating? Mm, yes and no. Like, you kind of expect the uh, I'm about to say sibling, the descendant of the master to be somewhat good, you know? Mm-hmm. But also, was she a year older than Zoro? Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, being a year ahead means a lot because that's a lot of experience. That's true. So yeah, she had an advantage, but that's just in pure experience itself. You right. You right. B, look at you coming with the knowledge. <laughs> and so uh we kind of get like a small dispute between Zoro and Kawina here where Zoro's pretty much telling Kawina like listen you cheating I'm better than you if we if we was using real swords I would win and she was like all right bet put your money where your mouth is homie and she's like at <laughs> dawn I get it dawn don't get it get it get it get it get it get it so at dawn, we're going to fight with real swords. So then the scene flashes back. And uh, we go back seven years in the future. back to the, So that was like more so a Zoro flashback there. So let me do a quick summary. Zoro's actually trying to escape the well. I, didn't, I, f- I failed to mention it. So the well that he was trapped in, he was trying to get out. And he's kind of having flashbacks to kind of motivate himself. And we get his flashback. To him training, sorry, to him training in the dojo, he loses to the girl Kawina, and he basically challenges Kawina to another duel, but actually with real katanas versus the wooden swords, because she uh, he believed that it was like if we was actually to fight to the death, he would win. Kawina was just like, all right, bet, put your money in my face, we're gonna meet at dawn. And so we go back seven. Well, B, before we can tell you, you have anything you want to throw in? No, no, go back. I'm, I'm listening. I'm here. Okay, all right. I don't want to make sure I'm just rambling. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right, cool. And so we flash back to the back to Kai's mansion here, and this is going to go back to what I was saying last week in the last episode a little bit. Where Usopp is explaining to Kaya that Koro is a pirate. He's here to rob you. And Kaya is like, Usopp, I know you a liar, but stop lying. But this kind of goes back to what I was saying last week. Where it's like, I understand that Usopp is a liar and stuff like that. But at the same time... You can see the panic on his face and stuff like that. So would you kind of take into consideration that, okay, maybe he's not lying this time. Especially if you're his friend. Because you condoned his lying. Yeah, that's really true. Because he lied technically for you to also get better. So... I feel like she should have really believed him, especially with the way how how she how he was saying it, how urgent it sounded, how desperate it sounded. And exactly. Then she, yeah. Then she literally just said, "All right, I know." She said, "All right, I know you've been lying," but then she said, "Okay, f your lies. You ain't gonna be lying to me about someone who has been taking care of me." But also. The people who take care of you are also the ones who can easily betray you. Exactly. Like, what does Usopp gain from trying to... So, what's Usopp gain trying to take you out of your house, away from Kuro? Or Kalidor? He literally gains nothing from it. Exactly. And And he saw what happened to Mary. 
so I don't understand. Like, yeah, he Mary... explains. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go like, ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry. I mean, like, if Mary's gone, if he said that about Mary, don't you think that should be something serious too? Exactly, because that's actually what I was about to tell you too. Uh, he tells Kaya, "Yo, Mary's dead," <laughs> and she still like, "Usopp, no." And I'm like, "Bro, you could just look at the panic on his face." <laughs> exactly. That's like your child. That's like your child coming running up to you and say, "Say, and um, you know your child lies." Like saying, "Like, uh, oh, there's someone at the door, and they you open the door, nobody's there, or something like that." Exactly. But it's even worse when your child tells you the kitchen is on fire, and you don't believe your child. Like, and your child is sitting there, like, okay, I guess we all gonna burn. Uh, it's weird. That's something I was like, kind of, because in the anime, didn't Kaya believe him like right, right off the bat? No, it was also some debate, but it was Mary because she showed up. Yeah, I think Mary helped her believe him, and if not, because I know when Nami shows up and like helps Kai, like tells Kai that nope, he he's telling the truth. He he's here to kill us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just don't know why. Like I don't know. I was trying to figure out what. Mary, it wasn't Mary, or was it? I think it was the help of Mary and maybe the Usopp pirates that really. No, because even the Usopp pirates didn't believe him at the time too. Okay, it had to been Mary. Mary had to been the one thing because Mary had to been scratched up, like banged up real bad. Hmm. I don't know. The, that's my only issue with it. It's like, it's not bad, it's just a slight. So then, now we, uh, cut through Koro, and he's pretty much telling Sham and Bucha, alright, it's time to enact the plan, and then this is when we see them in their anime gear, in a manga gear. Let me pull them up here. I just realized I couldn't spell that for a second. Here we go. Well then. What? Nothing. You can spell, you can spell. Bitch, leave me alone. <laughs> I got it. I'm trying to pull up their anime counterparts here. Eh, this is close enough. Alright, so... This is where we finally get the uh, anime and manga counterparts to really the... Cute. Huh? He really got a hunchback. Um, oh, yeah, he really do. I'm glad they didn't throw that in there. Right? Sorry, I, I just really pointed out when um you put them side by side, like, oh, hunchback. Like, that is a major lean over. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was looking at a text message here. But they they look really good, especially in their, like, manga anime counterparts. Mm -hmm. You got Bucha here. The only difference with Bucha is that he just has a shirt on, but that's not throwing yeah, off. Yeah, they work. They were going to do that. And then we got Michelle here. Mm -mm. <laughs> so the only reason I said that, called her Michelle, is because we have a friend that we both agreed with that we could see her pulling off this cosplay. <laughs> if, and if, Michelle, you're watching, or you happen to come across this, please do it. You can pull it off. I believe in you. But they they look pretty good. They I'm not complaining at all. And so uh, that's when Nami finally comes into the scene and tells Kaya, listen, Kaya, bestie, 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 listen to me, bestie. Bestie, listen to me. Look at she even got those eyes going on right now. She's like, Bestie, listen to me, Bestie, 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 listen, listen. Nah, Coral is <laughs> Coral <That's> not... <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's like... That's not even bestie face like bestie eyes. That's like girl, if you do not listen, we are dead. <laughs> you gotta do the clap with it. Be... Alright, so repeat, I'm gonna do the clap. 
They're like, girl, if you do not listen, we are dead. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, right? Like, I swear, if if they cursed like a whole lot more, mm. she would have straight up said, "Bitch." There's you, a look at me. There's you a serial killer the in the house. You know, th- this will be it right here. This, hold on, let me pull this up. Are you about to pull a pine house? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this was exactly. There's a ghost in the house. I'm out. <laughs> That's exactly how. That- that- all right, all right. I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna replay. I'm <laughs> so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna replay, but we gotta look at Nami do it. All right, ready? You ready? Oh, it went backwards. Bitch, there's a ghost. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. There we go. You ready? Bitch, there's a ghost in the house. I'm out. <laughs> she got those eyes. It was the eyes that said it all. <laughs> but she like, she basically is like, so in this scene, let me stop that. So in this scene here, uh, Nami is like pretty much confirming Usopp's not a liar. Coral's trying to kill us. And they did something. This is one of the differences compared to the manga and anime. In the manga, well, no, the manga and anime compared to the live action. In a manga and anime, the whole fight between the Straw Hats and the Black Cat Pirates actually take place outside during the day. And now in this one, it's nighttime and it's all inside the house. And I, the one thing I thought, and did you kind of notice this too? They kind of gave a horror movie type vibe to it. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be like uh, a serial. I think it was supposed to be more like a serial killer type movie or a vibe with it. I'm not too sure. Like you, you know, when um, like Michael Myers in the house, he got the claws. <laughs> yeah, just like he was just walking around scraping his claws against the walls and everything. Just saying, hello, Kaya, come on out, or whatever, you know? Ooh, that's a better scene. Hold on, let me grab this one here. Here we go. It's like a whole Freddy Krueger type vibe to it. But Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was so cool. Because I noticed that, uh, I think this is where Oda was really kind of playing with the, the script a little bit. Because, uh... In a manga, he decides to do like kind of like a, a murder mystery type thing to it in a manga for a little bit. And then maybe he was kind of like, ooh, what if we did like a like a, a like a haunting like murder type movie deal for the uh, for the Sierra Village arc. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, I felt I wouldn't be surprised if he had that idea and they decide let's do it like that. Yeah, I can see that happening. So yeah, Coral's pretty much like so in this scene here, like pretty much this whole set this whole setup was Nami confirming confirming to Kaya that Usopp is not lying. Coral's trying to kill her and take her riches. Uh Mary is dead. We don't know where Luffy and Zoro's at. And Coral's trying to get you with his with his crew. Any uh any two like two cents B? Uh, no, that seems about right. Uh, they're pretty much mobilizing his whole crew. Well, this whole crew is just them three. Even though it's supposed to be a whole lot more. That's the okay. That's the part that bothered bother me still. The fact that I probably said this in the last um, episode, but the fact that um, there's only like two people from his crew. Which is fine because those are supposed to be like his right and like right and left hand men. Mm-hmm. But there's supposed to be a, at least a whole ship of other crewmates, you know, yeah, other black cats that's supposed to be there and help him with his raid. Yeah, Django's not there. This guy. Oh yeah, the hypnotist isn't even there. With his like his gag is that he always hypnotizes himself. That's hilarious. Yes, and for some reason he moonwalks everywhere. I'm not complaining. They probably can't find anybody who can moonwalk constantly. See, that's why they need to get uh one of Michael Jackson's kids. 
All right, uh, I think all the the zero simps is gonna hate me for what I just screenshot it, because <laughs> I was gonna because we're talking about the next scene now. So we cut back over to Zoro trying to get out the well, and this is the picture I screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> to shit himself. <laughs> like, um, what is that? He like, he like, he just heard the, like, the strangest sound in his closet. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. You know, he's just like, what was that? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm definitely saving this picture. Every time someone says, oh, zero, it's hot, I'm just gonna post this picture. <laughs> he's like, this is your man. <laughs> this is your man. Every single time someone says Zoro is hot, this is his reaction. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm saving this. Hilarious. Hilarious. Oh, all this, this is definitely going on TikTok, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes back to Zoro <laughs> trying to escape out the well. And we get the flashback again, but now we're going to the, uh, the duel between Zoro and Koina. So let me grab this here. I actually kind of like this shot that I just screenshotted, though. But we get uh, the duel between Zoro and Kawina. And as you can see, Zoro, like the white sword that Zoro talked about last episode, is right here. And that is, and I remember I was telling y'all how that, that's going to be, that's very important to Zoro. Because we're about to explain it in a second here. Where pretty much uh, Kawina and Zoro about to duel. And they're actually using real swords. And Zoro's actually using two sword style this time. So let me see if I can grab this one here. So Zoro's using two sword style. Where Kawina's still using a one sword. And Zoro's always proficient in two sword style, and uh, we're gonna get to it on what the reason or why Zoro actually uses three sword style. It is because of Kawina, but we're we'll explain why too, and why I also made the joke of calling Kawina Kawina D stairs. And so uh, they're fighting, they're fighting. Kawina trashes the hell out of him, and uh, but what they did was with this particular like flash part of flashback is that. You st like they cut between anytime Zoro take like young Zoro takes an L from Kawina, it cuts back to present day Zoro falling back down a well because he's trying to escape, and I kind of like that because it shows the tension of like, all right, this is difficult, but I can't stop right now if I want to achieve my goal. But you got any two cents for that part there? Uh, not. But yeah, I did like how they did that. Uh, so he's go well, as he's struggling to get back out out the well. He's remembering his past where he had to struggle against uh, his childhood friend, and it made sense at least for at that moment in time. It's like it's like stop. It's like having a uh, like a like it is having a flashback. But what is it? Um, it's like the same saying as your life flashing before your eyes. But I think it's only for like traumatic moments, not traumatic moments, but difficult moments. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what that was for him, a difficult moment. And you just looking back on your life and seeing how or where it all started or how you got here mm -hmm. or what you're doing this for, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. Bro. I'm telling you, this is all the Zero Simpsons is gonna hate me now. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I like the way how you put that. It's like, like basically what you were saying is, is uh, like this is almost his near death experience in a way. Yeah, so even just, though, yeah, even though it wasn't really like his actual yeah. death. Yeah, it was close enough. So then, yep, uh, 
Zoro, so let me bring up this scene here. Because this is really going into what we were actually about to talk about on like why Zoro is the person who he is now. So in this part here, Kuina says, and I wanted to screenshot it with the captions, but she says you always have raw skill because this is right after she beats him. And she pretty much states in the, uh, she really says to Zoro, just like, yeah, I'm better than you now, but eventually you're going to be better than me because you're a guy. And that saying that because, like, you know, she's a female, she doesn't have much muscle and strength compared to another guy. Zoro eventually is going to get stronger than her. And Zoro's like, no, nah, that's nonsense because you're one of the best fighters here. I'm behind you, but I ain't one of the best fighters here. Well, you, well, you're one of the best fighters here. Sorry, sorry, miss, miss phrase that there. She says you're that like, he tells Kawina you're one of the best fighters, and they both share the same. They they share to each other that they have the dream of being the best swordsman and swordswoman in their world, and so they shake on it. Uh, do they get to that part now? No, they don't. So then we cut back to present day, where. Kobe and Helmeppo are carrying Luffy back to Garp. And Kobe starts to question, is he doing everything correctly? And Helmeppo is just like, why? So you can suck her up to Garp again? Like, Garp doesn't like you. He's basically using you to do all his dirty work. And Kobe says, nah, that's not true. And they kind of go at it again be any two cents here real quick before we move on to the next part that's it for right there but uh how Mepo still being that like i don't know that little for lack of a better word a prick mm -hmm. because he's still trying to undermine kobe even though kobe knows exactly what he wants to do right now like you see the determination in kobe's eyes right now I don't know. I just think Kobe, uh, not Kobe, Helmepo's character could have uh, used uh, better development, like, or quicker development because this was not needed right here. It really wasn't. Well, he does get the development later on in the, uh... Episode? Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I feel like he could have gotten his development already. Like, he Thank should you for the sub. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like he should have been smarter, smart enough now to know what he was doing or know what he should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Solid, solid. So then now we cut back over to uh Do I want do we want to start calling him the weakling trio now? Or should we wait for season two? Who's the trio? Is Usopp, Nami, and Chopper. I think you have to wait until you get Chopper in there. Because right. for right now, they're the weakling duo. But, mm. I'll, but as of this point, Nami's actually stronger than Usopp. Well, it's always been like that. Yeah, but in the live action, it's more evident. That's true. So then... U Usopp oh. was hiding underneath the table. That's true. But he always has underneath the table. Yeah, but he's supposed to throw some shots in there. He does eventually. Nah, he needs to do it every, like every now and then. Like, be brave from behind somebody's back and then, you know, be the sniper. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I gotta agree with you on that one there. Yes. <laughs> but then again, it goes back to what I was saying. Usopp is the most human. So, like, Let's be honest, if a man walks into your house that has sword claw hands and he's just like threatens to like say give me all your valuables, are you really going to try and sit there and fight him? No, but come on. If U Usopp is like the best shot that he claims to be, then he can think of something. He doesn't have to be up close and personal with this guy. But then, never mind. He has that little super speed that he has. True. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But Us I think Usopp 
could be better. At least stronger. I don't know. Maybe throw hands every now and then. He does eventually. 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 I think, I think the original him should be able to throw hands. He does. And the uh, and our, not he's not that strong though. He's a sniper. He's a sniper and a runner. That's all he is. <laughs> Zoro's the samurai. L I D Y Nami's not shy. Okay. <laughs> Usopp is snipering and Sanji's cooking. <laughs> Come on, it's in the theme song, B. Did you get this from the Kids Bop version? No. It was, yes. the, it was the four kids version. There's a difference. I said kids bop, didn't I? You Either did. way, it's the same thing to me. <laughs> it's kids bop. Yo, Zoro, he's just like a samurai LAD why Nami's not shy. <laughs> oh my. All right, so back to it. Uh, So we cut back over to Kaya, Nami, and Usopp, and they're trying to figure out how to get the shutter doors open because, again, back in last episode... Coral and the Black Cats, they shut down, well, they uh, turned on the shutter doors to lock everybody in. And there was only two. The first one is what Coral has, is that, uh, baby, hey. It's in the, uh, kitchen area, I guess. We're not going to try and stress our brains on where it's at. But the other one in, in, is in Kaya's parents' bedroom, which she hasn't been to because they died. So they make their way over to the bedroom, try to avoid, uh, avoid Koro, and they start pulling down the lever to try and open up everything. And that's when Koro realizes, oh, that's where they at. They're in Kaya's parents' room because he, as the butler of the family, the murderous butler of the family, he's like, okay, there's only, which I kind of like that the fact that he's not playing stupid, where it's like, Oh, I don't know where they're at. Let me just keep looking around. He immediately knows, oh, there's only two switches. And I already got one. So clearly they're in that area. So let me just go straight there. So I, I like that. I really did like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then this was a very Zero-esque flashback history. So then now we flash back to another Zero flashback. Because we're still getting his backstory. And we find out that. What was her name? Wow. The fact that I forgot her name that quickly. Kawina. That's her name. Thank you. Kawina has passed away. And in the anime. It said that she fell down some stairs. In the manga. Wasn't that there was people that. uh That came and raided the village. And that's how she died. Or something like that. No. Was it always been stairs? I don't think it was. St- was it stairs? Did they say stairs? I swear to God, it didn't say stairs. I think it was an illness. You sure about that? I'm thinking illness. Hold up well, here. At least anime. I'm pretty sure illness. Because. She was, yeah, she was in bed sick before. I think, I'm maybe I'm making this scene up in my head. <clears throat> okay, here's what the fan wiki says on Kuina. Unfortunately, this will be their last interaction as Kuina accidentally fell down a staircase the next day to a fatal impact. Is that for the live action? No, that's for the anime. What? Okay, I'm mixing. Okay, I'm mixing animes now. Yeah, that's. that's I don't remember that at all. Her name is Kawina D. Stairs. Oh, or no, they, I think the fandom called her fell down or fell fell, and then the down. So we found D. Stairs. No, fell D. Stairs or something like that. And the D for. The D stands for down, so it'd be like fell down these stairs or something like that. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Uh...
All right, so as you continue, like looking for that, I'm gonna just pull these up here and continue talking. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kozaboro tells Zoro that she fell down the steps and got. Oh God, hit. I'm sorry. I just saw it. Hmm. Yeah, in the manga it said. Uh, Alright, this is still a clap action. It said she fell down the stairs, as you said. Okay. Uh, no, no. Did I pull that up? Oh, yeah, so they're at uh, Kawina's funeral. And. Zoro pretty much reaches for her sword, and his sensei act, but not well. He asks his sensei, "Can he carry on uh, Koina's dream of being the best swords person in the world?" And he hands her his iconic white blade. The uh, damn it, I'm mad. I forgot about it already. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah, she fell down the stairs. Yeah, she fell down the steps. Told you. I could have sworn it, there was a scene of Zoro, or was that a funeral? Maybe that was the funeral. Is that there? I, I, I thought it was a scene of Zoro uh, and like everybody sitting there. Like she's like underneath like a white, like she, she looks like she's in bed, basically. Yeah, this one here. I'm going to bring it up. That scene. But she has like the white thing over her face. Oh, yes. I was assuming illness and then she died right there. That's what I was thinking. Nope, she 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 fell down these stairs. Okay. Fell down these stairs. That's her name, new name. Fell down these stairs. It's been so long since I've seen the scene. I thought it was um illness. I assume I changed it to illness. I think that's what the fandom wants it to be. Yeah, because that's a dumb way. I'm sorry, that's so insensitive. But it's a dumb way to die, or to put it away. Like my childhood, my my childhood friend, my enemy, my rival, literally died falling down the stairs. No lie, when uh, I was rewatching this, was it P E T? Every time I. Uh... Like when they every time I think of the scene, like when she falls down the stairs, I immediately think of the Family Guy scene Peter with Peter. Oh, here it is. Politely. What? <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, no, she. That's how she died. She fell down the steps, and then uh, at the funeral, Zoro asks uh, Kozoboro, "Can he has Kawina's uh, Wano Ichimonji, the white sword?" And he asks why. And he was like, "Because we both share the same passion and dream of being the set best swordsman slash woman in the <laughs> in the world." Right. I'm only laughing because the way how I'm picturing Zoro each time someone's like, what is your dream? My dream is to be the best swordsman slash woman in the world. <laughs> really? Like, and everybody's just like, what? <laughs> woman? Are you tra- that will leave every- make everybody think he's trans. Oh, yeah, just the way how he would say it. That's just how I picture him saying it. Oh my god. And so he... Like- mm-hmm. Everybody look at him the same way he Zoro looked in well. Oh, like this? <laughs> yes. Yo, I might set this as my profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Where's my slash woman? Huh? And so. Zoro, and then it flashes back to Zoro finally making it out the well after all of this time. So yeah, his whole flashback was just pretty much him kind of like, I can't give up. I got a friend that passed away because she fell down these stairs. And so he finally makes it out the well. And uh, it goes back. So we flash back over to Kobe Helmeppo and Luffy wakes up. 
and he wakes up he finally wakes up he barfs on let me see if i can get that scene here oh actually i like this scene we're gonna do this one Where you at? 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 There you are. So yeah, Luffy finally wakes up because he throws up, and uh, he uh get on oh, like he basically just uh tells Kobe like, Kobe, you're a Marine. Can you come help us? Kobe's like, no, I gotta take you in, cause you're a pi You're a bad pirate, Luffy. And Luffy pretty much like tells Kobe like, listen, I got friends who are in danger that I care about, and. I don't care that you're a Marine. I'm going to go help my friends. If you stand in my way, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Pretty much. Yeah. And then Kobe just lets him lets him go because he knows he can't beat them. And he runs... Like I forgot to tell you. Zoro catches up with Luffy too. And they both run off to the castle together. Oh, they, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Uh-huh. Before you go off to the next scene. Mm-hmm. In this scene, this is the one and only time you'll ever see Zoro getting lost in standard Zoro fashion. Because when he really? met up with Luffy, he was actually on his way to the mansion, but he was running away from it. He was running towards Luffy at the gate. Oh, I see it. Don't, yeah, you see it? He's like, he was like, I was trying, like, what are you doing here? I was like, I was trying to get back to the mansion. That was the only. That was Zoro getting lost right there. I never knew that. That's smart. What you didn't see that? No, I never realized that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, that was Zoro getting lost because that well was in the property. He was leaving the property. You right. You right. <laughs> That's, That's hilarious. Why I, the scene. <laughs> I didn't realize that. That's hilarious. B, you you are you're a cinematic genius. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So then we cut back over to uh, the weakling duo and Kaya. And they're still trying to struggle to get the thing open, the, the shutter doors. And uh, Coral catches up with them. And Coral is just more like, uh, he kind of gives him a backstory of like, uh, it was so painful trying to be your butler and maintain this innocence. Like, Coral, brush my hair. Coro paint my nails. He was just freaking out. And <laughs> I'm still sitting there like, bro, no one told you to be his like be her butler. You probably could have asked her parents for a different job or something. Like, isn't it wasn't that difficult. Cook. Exactly. He could have just been cook. Oh and wait, no, wait, wait. Did his parent was his was her parents the one that took him in, or did he kill her parents? That's her parents took him in, and it's hinted at that his parent, well, Kai's parents was killed by pirates, but we don't know which pirates. I would like to think it was the Black Cat pirates that killed them, because it will only make sense that way. Yeah, that's why I was. That's why I thought. But then they say that, uh, it happened. Oh wait, maybe that's the anime. It happened in the raid, and Koro came in. Afterwards, or during the same, or I don't know, somewhere around it after that time. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but okay. That's all I just had to figure out before you went on. <laughs> We're actually gonna be summing up this whole lot of this whole big part here because it's just all the fight scenes. Oh, cool. So yeah, and there's no, and I was looking through it. There's really no Easter eggs in it. Uh. Okay. Well, no. Besides Zoro going three short style, which I want to explain that, but I get that when we get there. This is one scene that I was like, I'm kind of happy they didn't do. They didn't do the generic. Let me see. I gotta pull it up first so you can actually like get it. here. It is perfect, perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. Because we cut over and we see Nami and Kaya hiding underneath a table from Koro, and Koro's pretty much explaining just like. He's trying to taunt her to come out by saying, like, your parents must hate you and stuff like that. Like, you're useless. You're dead weight. And I'm at first, I when I first saw this scene, I was like, 
please don't have her be generic blonde hair chick where it's like, I gotta defend my honor. It's just like immediately jumps off in her hiding spot. Because oh, even right. Nami was like, don't be don't stupid. Yeah, <laughs> and then she did say like, well, I'm not a little girl anymore. She pulls a knife out. So I'm like, okay, at least it wasn't, how dare you talk bad about my parents? It was more like, okay, I'm ready to fight now. So I'm happy they didn't do that. That's and, cool, but and, I don't think I like the generic white girl, um, all right, I'm going to fight back, even though I know I have no chance. Exactly. And I'm happy Nami even said, like, don't be stupid. He's like, yeah. you, you can't beat this guy. Don't be stupid. Exactly. That's the only thing saving her. And then, yeah, that's when she pulls out the knife and tries to attack him. Luffy and Zoro finally makes it to the mansion themselves. So this part is probably going to be a little bit shorter because it's just a fight scene. So, it's, But it's not really much to go on in a fight scene. Besides Zoro's three-sword style, which I am going to talk about here. But Zoro and Luffy finally makes it to the mansion. They say they split up. I actually found that part kind of funny. Like Luffy telling Zoro to split. No, Zoro telling Luffy to split up. <laughs> and I was like, really? Out of all places? <laughs> Out of all yes, people? Exactly. So like, split up. Like, you you should be the last one to tell us to split up. <laughs> and uh, so Luffy fights Koro, of course. And Zoro fights uh, Bucci and Sham. And they're actually kind of giving Zoro a run for his money here. Let me pull up the three sword style scene here. Um, even though this fight scene's cut between the two. Uh, let me see. Hold up, hold up. I'm pulling, it's almost there. Better, better, better. Better, better, better. <laughs> better, better, better. Better, better, better. Better, better, better. Better, better, better. Oh, no, he doesn't do the three-sword style in this fight. He just reach, he just jumps around to grab his sword. And so I'm just gonna pull up each of these scenes then. So Zoro's fighting uh Bucci and uh Sham. Luffy's fighting uh Koro, and it's just kind of like a going back and forth type fight. Generic. I ain't gonna call it generic. It's more like, of course, you know the good guys are gonna win. Uh. I believe, you know, just because I just paused on this part here, I'm going to bring it up. And it's like, in some cases, I kind of get, like, why some people don't like Luffy's facial expressions. Because this is two for two now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> B, you see this? <laughs> yeah, I see it. Who is this? What? The music in the background? No, um... Oh, this is Lord. Oh my gosh. What, Lord talking to you? Yeah, on Discord. But this is like 20 minutes ago. Oh, he's messaging in Discord? He messaged me on Discord. He said, tell Kevin I said, what's up? What up, Lord? Yeah, he said, Oop, let me leave and finish studying. I was coming to say what's up, so I'm going to take my leave here because y'all so deep in conversation. Aw, thanks, Lord. Love I think that. you were going to hop in Discord, but maybe we were so deep in conversation. <laughs> true. True, true. Yeah. Still love you, Lord. Still love you, dog. Uh-huh. And yeah, so... uh <laughs> Was it? What was I saying? Luffy fights Koro, Zoro fights Shaman Bucci. And it's a pretty good fight scene. Uh, Zoro loses uh, Wado Ichimoji, but he gets it back. And Koro really doesn't pull up a fight, like put up a good fight against Luffy because it's Luffy. Right. And, you know, they win. It's daylight. And Kaya, and if you guys remember, the whole purpose of Luffy meeting Kaya. Was because he was going to ask Kaya for the going merry ship. And Kaya, instead of just, you know, cutting the price down, she was like, because of what you guys did, I'm going to just give you guys the ship. And Kaya, little Luffy is happy about that. 
And Luffy act, and then that's when Luffy finally asks uh, Usopp to join his crew as his marksman, because he likes the way how he can shoot. Right. And he first, uh, Usopp says no because it's like, who's going to take care of Kaya? And Kaya's like, Usopp, go. This is your big chance. Be like your pops. And be, like, even though he doesn't say it. Kai kind of hints at that this allows you to be your chance. Like, this is your chance to become the brave warrior of the sea. Is my music too loud again? I don't know. Let me see. It's kind of loud. Alright, so let me see. Yeah, even if mine says a little bit. I'm just going to turn it off right now. Uh, so yeah, Luffy. Uh, hey, Luffy asks uh, Usopp to join his crew. Usopp's like, "Nah, he's gonna take care of Kaya." Kaya's like, "No, nah, my dog, go out to sea, be like your pops, become the brave warrior you see. So when you come back, I can hear about your stories." Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And uh, this is when we finally get confirmed that Usopp and Kaya are a pair. The first true pair in the Straw Hat crew. And they, uh... Let me see if I can pull up that scene here. Oh, right. Before he left, um... She kissed him, right? Mm-hmm. Which, that actually didn't happen in the manga. Right. Or in the anime. Right. Like, it was... I think it's because they're supposed to be... It's supposed to be like a budding love or whatever. Yeah, well, this one is just straight up. Okay, I love you. Well, it's more realistic. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna see you for a long time, so I might as well. Like, just, 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 just take the chance, my guy. Take the chance. Exactly. And so, and then one. Okay, this was a scene I actually just quickly want to go back to. Uh, Usab's just like. So Kai still kind of believes that Usopp is the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. And even though she knows he's a liar, he, she for some reason still believes that. And even oh. Luffy was like, do they know I'm the captain? And then Nami's just like, just, just let them have this one. <laughs> oh, right. So I felt like that was kind of like a, a kind of like a small plot hole where it's like, how Kaya knows that Usopp be lying, but for some reason she thinks that's like the actual truth. I don't know what she thinks might be the truth. It'd be crazy if they got together and he just all telling these all all these white lies. And then and we, she, go ahead. I don't know. It should be. I don't know. It's just weird to me. Like she'll believe, she'll believe the lies, but won't believe the truth. That's why I think. And then we finally get the shot of the Going Merry Sailing. Which, the figurehead actually finally grew on me. Like, I'm kind of glad they chose the realistic go-ahead versus the uh, the cartoony one. Even though the cartoony one, it I feel like it wouldn't change that much of the tone. But I like the way how this one is. Well, actually, you know what? All of the ships have like a. Okay, that was weird. Um, all the ships have like a cartoony uh, figurehead, sort of. Mm-hmm. Like after the like, okay, if you think about in the um, so in the anime, the go so the straw hat ship was going merry. After that, it's a thousand sunny. Mm-hmm. Even if lion's head is um, cartoony. So let's just say, what if they make it to the to Water Seven and we get to see the Thousand Sunny? Do you think they would want to use an actual lion head, like a realistic think, lion head? I think they will, but if they do, this is my only thing, y'all. They will have to. So the ship has to have its features, the Frankie features, you know. You're right. It has to have the Frankie features. I needed to be able to one. Have the what they call it, the Gengal cannon in the front, the and cola, have the, the cola tank chargers. 
Yeah, so basically in the lion's mouth, there has to be a cannon that could be used. And in the rear, there has to be the coup de burst where they, for a quick escape. And the cola that, in the middle of the ship that just powers the whole thing. You do, know? You th- do they think they'll call it cola? I think it has to be called cola. Just because that's literally what it's been called. That's like, true. What else would you call it? You can't call because... it gas. Because of Coca Cola, I think it, I think it has to be called cola. If not cola, then what? Maybe soda. Well, is cola just a flavor? And then Coca Cola, that's just their brand name, but they don't have the rights to just the word cola. Coca Cola is the brand. Cola is a flavor, but I don't know if Coca Cola is their. I don't know if they have that. Is that's like their, like brand, like copyrighted type thing? I so hope not. If I type in the word cola, just cola. I'm pretty sure Coca Cola will show up. Oh, okay. No, cola itself means carbonated drink. Oh wait, no. Yeah, actually, no. Cola. Cola is a carbonated soft drink. Flavor of vanilla, da, 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 da. cola became popular. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, so yeah, Coca Cola is just the fact that it's a carbonated soft drink mm-hmm. made with generic ingredients for the. Oh, but it was invented by Coca Cola, right? The pharmacist who invented Coca Cola. But which was imitated by other manufacturers. Most colas or- originally contain caffeine from the cola nut, leading to the drink's name. So okay, so it's just a nut then. Yeah. So they don't realistically have the name, the property name to cola to an extent, but you can still use it. So like, let's just say if you want to make your own soft drink, you can use cola, the name cola. You just can't use Coca Cola. Yeah, you can't use Coca Cola. Cola, though, well, cola because the cola nut is spelled with a K, not a C. True. And the cola drink is spelled with a C, but I think that's because they created Coca Cola, so it would go with the word. You know, it would be like a short, short word for cola, Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think it still means carbonated drink because. Many people have imitated it, and I think it just still be just like a generic thing at this point. True that buttercup. Actually, you know what? It it can be because there's those off-brand soft drinks in stores, you know, like, so you have Sprite, then there's like, uh, what is it, Mist? Mm Mm-hmm. So I think cola has those um, off-brand versions, and the and the flavor is still called cola. Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, sorry, that was a whole sidetrack. It really was. <laughs> I actually started drawing a little bit over here on some sticky note pads because I was listening oh. to what you were saying. Oh dang! <laughs> <laughs> so, I did yeah. not mean to go off like that. No, nah, that's cool. So uh, now we kind of cut off to like Garp talking to Kobe and Kobe's like, oh, snap. Uh, I'm sorry, Garp. I failed the mission. And Garp is like, nah, you did exactly what you wanted to do. I wanted you to draw out the pirates. And I got a question for you, B. Yep. Because, again, we know we've been knew the history of Garp and Co- uh, Luffy and how they're related. But do you still, like, do you, like, at this point, do you kind of got the feeling that maybe Garp wasn't really all the way after Luffy? He just kind of wanted to see him and, like, what what type of moves he does before he hit the Grand Line and make sure he's, like, right on the right track? That's because they, he already, he already, um, like, threw cannons at Luffy already, right? No, that was on their way to, uh. Is that after, oh, wait, no, that's right after this one. Yeah, they was on their way to Baratie when it happened. 
Okay, so yeah, that's right after this one. Um, yeah, I think he wanted. I think he wanted Luffy to go and see what Luffy was gonna do. But I think he really did. I think he really was trying to catch Luffy. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, he was trying to catch Luffy, but I think he wanted to first see what Luffy could really do with uh, what he was doing out there. Oh, he wait. Are you sure he what didn't already um throw the cannons at Luffy? Because I'm looking at the mask on the picture you screenshot it. And it's broken. Yeah, because that's the next episode. Because the this episode ends with them, with Garp yelling out, Luffy. And then that's when Luffy's like, Gran Grandpa. And everybody's like, Grandfather? And then the next episode starts off with them throwing the cannons at him. Oh, so why is their mask broken? I don't know. remember why their mask got broken. Because I thought it was Luffy redirecting a, a cannonball right back at them. Nah, yeah, I'm looking back at that now. Nope. Huh. Okay, that's weird. Unless that's just the detail they just left there. Possibly. Or maybe the mask was just always broken like that. If it was, I swear, it was never that noticeable. But okay. But yeah. Oh, I forgot the original question. <laughs> and then we finally ended off with... Usopp showing them, showing everybody his Jolly Roger of the Usopp, well, the Usopp Pirates Jolly Roger, which I was like, that's nice that they at least gave us that. And it actually looks pretty good. So a lot of people don't know this, but Usopp was the one who designed the Straw Hat uh, Jolly Roger because he could actually draw. <laughs> the, he's literally a man of many talents. That's hilarious. Yeah, he redid Luffy's um, straw hat. Jolly Roger, my gosh. Which I still want. I want Luffy's Jolly Roger, the one he drew. No. Yes. I'm going to find it and get it. That's a kid's drawing. You can find it anywhere. It's just a kid's drawing, though. B, when I get my new place, can I be like a, a housewarming gift from y'all? Yeah. Maybe. Yay. So then, last scene of the uh, season, not the season, episode, it's, uh, what was it? Garp is yelling out to Straw Hat Luffy. Luffy's confused, and he looks over the bow of the ship and sees a man yelling his name, and he's like, Grandpa, and everybody's like, wait, hold on, Grandfather, and the scene ends. So that's how you end off fourth episode. You end it off with, we finally get the connection of Luffy and Garp and Usopp joining the crew. So we got our fourth party member. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so be any two cents? Uh, no. That's if that that's how it ends. So nah, that's all. That's a uh, at least a good way to end it once you. Can come back for the next episode to see mm -hmm. what happens if you know nothing about one piece then then yeah it's a great way because they also introduced the fact that their um garp and luffy are related way earlier than it did in the manga or in uh yeah because wasn't anime. wasn't they on their way to water seven no like oh so, so in i think in the manga and the anime they were about to leave Water's Head. They had already got Robin back and everything. But the problem was, Garp, since Garp knew that they were at Water 7 because they just left in, I thought I say Impale Down, um, Any's Lobby. Yep, it wasn't until the end of Water 7 going into Any's Lobby. Yeah, so they, after they got Robin back from Any's Lobby, that's when Garp showed up. And that's when everybody assumed, like, oh, no, the, um, the Marines are here to uh, get the Straw Hats. But it turned, ended up being Helmeppo, Kobe, and Garp. And and that, mo yep, right there, that's when he uh, mentioned that first, no one knew that they were related. And then two, that's when they mentioned about 
dragon being Luffy's father. So this is how everybody found out Luffy's like lineage, just all like all in one. So he, this guy is just related to every famous person. <laughs> exactly. No lie, I was kind of hoping they was gonna do this scene here, where they had just have both Luffy and Garp knocked out, but in live action, like they just randomly fall asleep. Nah, I don't think they could do that one. That's too cartoony. I know, but it'll be like but... a nice little like joke for the for the people who's like known about this whole history for a while now. Yeah, I think. Um... But I think the closest or better version of this would. Both of them would be like both of them eating like a whole bunch of meat, you know. True. Wish they could have done that in Bratier, but we'll yeah. get there next week. Nice, yeah, that's nice. All I had to say. Yep, yep. Uh, any other things you want to say before we end the pirate talk and go into some gaming? Uh, no, that's it. I've got everything out. All right, so we're going to end the pirate talk here. We're still going to be live. I just got to do my cutaway for when I go and edit. But, man, but thank y'all for staying with the pirate talk. Stay safe, man. Stay cool. Stay chilly. And if you guys here on stream, just stay tuned. We're actually about to play the game now. So don't y'all leave. Y'all better stay. <laughs> don't y'all leave. <laughs> All right. My lord. Oh. Uh, uh, what, 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 what? Oh, well, you need to, uh, address the village about everything that's going on. All right. Hand me my drink. Here you are, my lord. Thank you. Lord 17, where did you get that? I got this from a uh, Kage Cat. Oh, you never heard of it? Well, they sell really dope merch there. And if you're interested, definitely hit them up. Uh, link to their website will be in the description and comment section down below.